I'm Norma Neufner, policewoman, attached to the juvenile division. I'm on a call from a very worried mother whose daughter is missing. Her daughter's name is Judy Miller. Judy enjoyed babysitting, but there weren't enough jobs among the people she knew, so she decided to advertise at the supermarket for extra work. Late the following afternoon, the phone rang, and Judy was offered a job for that evening. The man told her he and his wife were going out to dinner and that their regulars could he pick her up in 15 minutes. Judy's mother hadn't returned when it was time to go, so she left a message by the telephone. When her mother came home, she found Judy's note and called the number to let Judy know she was home in case she wanted anything. A woman answered, but she didn't know anything about Judy and told Mrs. Miller she must have the wrong number. By midnight, Mrs. Miller was really worried. She phoned the police and was transferred to juvenile. I took the necessary information and assured her we'd do everything we could. She'd have to try to be patient and wait. The waiting lasted almost a week. Then the report came in. Judy's body had been found on a lonely desert road. The most difficult part of my job is bringing bad news to parents. You can never find the right words to tell a mother her daughter has been murdered. Judy hadn't done anything wrong. She'd only been careless. Careless about whom she'd trusted. In itself, there'd been nothing wrong about advertising for a job, but it led her to trusting a person she knew nothing about. A mentally sick person who used her innocent ad as an introduction to his act of violence. Being safe is often no more than applying good judgment in everyday life. One night while Barbara was babysitting, the doorbell rang. She didn't open the door, but called and asked who it was. A stranger said his car had broken down and could he use the phone. Barbara was very polite, but she told him she was babysitting and expecting a call from her parents. However, she was sure the next door neighbors were home and perhaps he could use their phone. The stranger thanked her and left. Now, Barbara had been polite and helpful, but she hadn't taken any chances. And when her father called, she was safe. Friday night was movie time for Sally and Elizabeth. Their parents alternated weeks taking them and picking them up. Friendships are easily made in a crowded theater, and when two older boys struck up a conversation and moved next to them, they were secretly pleased. At intermission, Sally found it flattering to have her friends see her in the company of older boys, and when they asked if they could take the girls home, she was all for it. She asked Elizabeth to call her folks and tell them that they could ride with a friend's parents. Elizabeth was tempted, but decided it wouldn't be right. And Sally was disappointed. When the show was over and they were leaving, the boys suggested that if Elizabeth couldn't go with them, why didn't Sally come? Sally thought it was a great idea and asked Elizabeth to tell her folks that her parents had picked her up. Elizabeth didn't like the idea, but Sally insisted. So, Elizabeth left alone. 
Not any of the boys she went with had a car, so it was fun riding with the older fellows. But when they drove right past her house, she became concerned. When they arrived at Lookout Peak, she was frightened. She tried to convince herself there was nothing to worry about, but when they parked off the road, she knew she had gotten herself into something she couldn't handle. At midnight, her parents became alarmed and called the Nelsons. Yes, Elizabeth was home. Hadn't they picked up Sally? No, over an hour ago. Or of course she could talk to Elizabeth. Between guilty tears, Elizabeth told what had happened. Sally had been found, dazedly walking down the road from Lookout Peak. It was a night they'll long remember. In fact, Sally may never be able to forget it. Often seemingly innocent places can turn out to be just where wrong associations are made. Mary met Robert at just such a place. Robert frequented the malt shop in his spare time, which was considerable, as he'd finished high school and didn't work. Here he sought out the company of younger teenagers because he wasn't accepted by those of his own age group. Mary and her girlfriend could always be found at the malt shop after school. Mary had seen Robert before and thought he was very good looking, so she was naturally flattered when he singled her out and struck up a friendly conversation. He was fun to talk to and they discussed everything from cars to movie stars. When he offered her a ride home, she was only too happy to accept. They drove around for a while and talked. Mary was a good listener, and Bob enjoyed nothing more than talking about himself. Mary knew her mother would be upset if she came home with an older boy, so Bob dropped her at the corner. After that, they saw a good deal of each other. At first, Bob was willing to see her at the malt shop, but as time went on, he became jealous of her friends and insisted on their spending more time alone. began to go to secluded places and their relationship became more intimate. Mary knew things were getting out of hand because Bob became more and more demanding, but not wishing to lose his friendship or the prestige she enjoyed from her friends for having an older boyfriend, she complied with his desire. Then Mary found she was in trouble and had to tell her parents. But now it was too late for advice, and Mary had to be taken out of school and placed under the guidance of juvenile authorities. Unfortunately, Mary's story is not an unusual one. Too many young girls are flattered by the attention of older boys and don't realize until too late that these boys, who cannot compete in their own age group, are often not well adjusted and will demand too much in a relationship with a younger girl. You see, it's often the things that are done without thinking that get young people into trouble. Trying to move too quickly into a world of grown-ups with a young person's faith often cause heartache and disaster. <laughs> 